Okay, roll call. Ms. Holly? All counselors present and a quorum has been declared. Thank you. Up next, we have the agenda approval. Counselor Griego? If there's no uh, comments, I'll make the motion to approve the agenda as uh, presented. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, please start voting. Ms. Holly? The motion carried unanimously. Okay, up next, we have our uh, citizens' comment. This is the segment of the agenda where we ask any uh, citizens that would like to make any comments to come up to the podium. <clears throat> and we would ask that you keep your comments uh, within three minutes. If you're not uh, done with your comments by three minutes, I will politely ask you to end your comments and have a seat. Do we have any comments today from the citizens? I don't nope. have any cards. Okay, thank you. Okay, up next we have ceremonial items. Is that you, Ms. Heather? Yes, it is, Mayor. Um, at this time, if Kelly is here, we will have Kelly come up. I want to introduce Kelly Bailey. She is our new public relations and project spe specialist. She's actually been on the job for about a week and a half at this point in time. We're excited every time she comes back, so <laughs> that's always nice. Um, Kelly brings an amazing background of experience that's um, perfect for this position. She has over 20 years in regards to public information, marketing, um, graphics, those types of skills. She's also worked um, at another municipality, so the background in, in working for a local government is a plus. She also has been one of our most valuable members on our art committee, and so transitioning into this position will make that almost seamless and also um, handling projects and, and the uh, autonomy that goes along with that. So we are very excited to have Kelly join our team. And um, Kelly, if you want to say a few words, I'll turn it over to you. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, I know most of you, not all of you. Um, it's good to see you. And did you have any questions for me? Any comments, anyone? Well, I just have a, a, a comment. Oh, take that. Uh, take that back. I'll let uh, Councilor Brawl go. No, I was just going to say, welcome aboard. Glad to have you. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. I, too, would like to welcome you, Kelly. I remember when I first met you, you were working at the welcoming center over there at the depot. The thing that I used to compliment you the most on was your radiant smile. You I'm did. really glad that you're, <laughs> you've brought that radiant smile to the city of Alamosa and the PR role. So quite sure that we're going to be looking forward to seeing you do great things. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Have a good meeting. All right, thank you. Okay, up next we have consent calendar A. Councilor Daniel. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I move that we approve consent calendar A. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, please start voting. Ms. Holly. The motion carried unanimously. Okay, thank you. Up next on our agenda, under regular business, we have presentations from outside agencies. Looks like we're going to have three uh, presentations tonight. So for the sake of time, um, I want all the presenters to know that uh, your presentations are limited to 10 minutes each so that we can make sure that all of the groups that are presenting will have a, enough time to, to give their presentations at, as well. Um, the way it's going to work tonight is we'll have you come up. Uh, give your presentation, and then council will ask you some questions, and then we'll have you sit back in the audience, and then we'll bring the conversation back to council for discussions, and there won't be any further questions of you when we bring it back to discussions. Is that okay? All right. Up first, we have funding requests from the Veterans Memorial Committee. Memorial Committee. Please come up to the podium. Mayor and City Council. Michael Yon, Alamos County Commissioner, U.S. Army veteran. And I'd like to introduce Steve Valdez, Frank Muniz, and Janet Yon. They'll be presenting. I just wanted to mention that the uh, 
veterans that uh, they serve has an economic impact of about $7 million a year, bringing funds into Alamosa County. This memorial is uh, in the city limits. It's at the gateway of Alamosa coming from the south at Airport Road and uh, uh, 285. So they'll present to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, uh, uh, Mayor uh, Coleman and uh, fellow uh, councilman for giving us the opportunity to come before you and talk about um, something that we feel pretty passionate about. Um, in front of you, you should have a packet that uh, I provided each one of you. And uh, just for the sake of um, navigation, the first part of that first page of that packet, just some bullet points that we want to point out. The second piece of that packet is the road map of where the location, the site location is going to be. And then the third attachment would be something that uh, we're potentially looking at um, in when we talk about the memorial and stuff like that. So um, well, we're um, three of um, a group that has been meeting. Our purpose is to construct a veterans memorial site here in honor of the five branches. Um, we've been meeting since about 2016. And uh, a lot of that time has basically gone into just discussion with neighboring all other memorial sites of what they've done and what they've experienced and, and how they've built their uh, memorials. We have since then secured a site uh, which is located on the second page um, donated by Alamosa County. It's approximately 1.3 acres is what it is. Alamosa County is also the acting fiscal agent holding the money for our fundraising purposes. Um, we are partnering, partnering with, with a local artist, Huberto Mestis, uh, from San Luis, and I think he's more known for the Stations of the Cross, some of his uh, sculptures he's put together. The project uh, we know is going to be staged over approximately three years with the completion date of 2021. Um, and it's really a, an opportunity for us to pull the entire community together and uh, be proud of something um, great in Alamosa. It's really a story that we want to tell and then we, we, we've looked at static displays and static display being a tank or an airplane. And we really feel like with the location and what it's gonna tell of uh, as you enter into Alamosa, that we want it to really be an emotional story. And some of the ideas that we've kind of talked to Huberto about and we've discussed ourselves is maybe a group of five branches in a circling, reaching to grass pans in the middle of a, showing a brotherhood of servicemen or maybe it's a older veteran consoling a younger veteran sitting on a bench or something like that. So we're here today to request um, some startup money. Um, approximately we're requesting $3,000. So far we've raised $2,500 of our own and that's through our own personal donations and the ties that we have and, and the strong uh, feelings and the passion we feel for the project. Our first goal is to raise $5,000 total. And let me just break that down just a little bit of why uh, we, I, I talk about 5,000. The first 2,500 of the 5,000 is just an artist's fee to submit drawings and gain final approval of the sculptures itself. And then the second part of that 5,000, the 2,500 of the 5,000, um, really will be where will be a small replica of what the memorial will look like. And it's... Um, the proposed uh, maquette could, will be sculpted in two sizes, maybe like a tabletop. But it's, uh, it's an opportunity for us to take this and raise money off of that. Just as we come to you before you today requesting money, it's really hard for us to go any, to any businesses or anybody and say, uh, this is what we're thinking of doing. Would you donate to us? So it's, it's the chicken or the egg is really what it comes down to. And we're trying to figure out which and what. But we figure that we could not come to you and request the money without us raising a piece of that, a part of that money ourselves within it. So our plan in that is that we take those tabletops and uh, we'll talk a little bit about how we're gonna raise that money on the second part of this, the back side of this page. Um, the budget part of this, and, and keep in mind um, that if funded, we plan on coming back with that tabletop model and showing you what the result of, of what that uh, 25 or that $3,000 that we request requesting from you it really uh, uh, results in. 
Um, the budget, the flat work of the structure estimate to just the, uh, the groundwork itself and the structure is approximately $153,000. The uh, bronze statue, an eight foot larger than the size, uh, size bronze statue is about $85,000 each. The six to seven foot uh, life-size bronze statues would be about 60,000. And then uh, below that is where we staged it over three years. So the first stage would be the $5,000 and our goal, our deadline to raise that is 215 of, uh, of this year. The stage two would be the first 150,000, which would basically represent the structure itself. By the end of this year, on 11-11 of 2019, um, that being Veterans Day. And then stage three, uh, 175,000 next year, 11-11 of 2020. And then stage four, 175,000, 11-11 of 2021. So some pretty aggressive goals, and some pretty aggressive fundraising um, that, um, that we have to really look at, and uh, we feel pretty confident on it. If you turn to the back side of that first page, um, we just, these are people that are groups that we have been in contact with and uh, have positively responded to um, supporting us once we get a um, tabletop or kind of a um, replica of what the monument will look like. So you can see that uh, the first part of that, and there's, there's others in there, um, these are just more grants on the top part of that. The second part of that is um, um, we, we know that we have to do some dinners with ASU veterans group, uh, individuals, businesses, service clubs. Um, City Market, Safeway, and Walmart have also expressed an interest in supporting something like this. Uh, Papa Murphy's, Chili's, we really have gone into the community and done some footwork to make sure that we have support for it prior to us even getting off and, and requesting money on this. Um, we've gone as far as even talking to the National Guard who would be very interested in putting together some trails, um, any of those things that they can do. The Forest Service also expressed an interest in getting involved in it also. So. And then Alamosa County has agreed to do some more of the site work on it also. Okay, thank you. Sure. Okay, did you have any other comments in your presentation? So um, this, the second page of that, do you have any questions on the site itself? Council? Council? <clears throat> Carson? Um, I don't have any questions in regards to the site. I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I, I do like it, I like the design very much. Okay. okay. I really think it's a great idea. And that third page kind of shows a... Yeah, I think it fits well. Um, something that we're looking at. Okay. Council Brawls? Yeah, is this a... It's for all five branches, you said? Right. Is it for just Alamosa County, or is it for the whole San Luis Valley? Or uh, who's the, are you going to have names on a plaque? Or? So um, a piece of this, if you look at that third page... Um, Yes, each star would represent the, a branch that, uh, and, and we feel like that's a good point, Councilman Broyles, because we feel like if we went to each one of those branches, that'd give us a better opportunity to raise that money for that, uh, that area. So it's a community project, not just Alamosa. So when you say community, are you talking about Canes County, Castilla County, or, or, or are there, are there going to be names on there of the people who have served in the military? Um, yes, there will, it'll be, it'll include the entire valley. Okay. Councilor uh, Daniel and then Councilor Carson. Thank you. <coughs> um, so first I wanted to say thank you for considering not um, having a tank or something else with it being as close to the mental health center and many veterans using that center. I, I feel like this um, will be very well received and, and is uh, trauma informed. And so thank you for that. I appreciate that thoughtfulness a lot. Um, the second question I have, so are, are with it being a Valley Memorial, are you going to approach other city councils and other communities as well? I just, I, I glanced through your list. I didn't see, I don't think any other local governments. And so I was just gonna check with you guys on that. Um, at this point, we don't have plans to. Okay. But um, once we get into a little bit deeper, we may, we may, of course, maybe open it up to for additional money to come in. Okay, thank you very much. Right. Councilor Carson. 
Um, I was going to talk about the funding side. Okay, you got questions for him about the funding side? Okay, all right. Councilor Grego, we'll talk about that in a second. I guess a comment on, on Chris's uh, question. Uh, this is, I, this is going to be a Alamosa County uh, and the City of Alamosa Veterans Memorial, but since it's a veteran, Veterans Memorial, all veterans from all over the six counties could appreciate it, you know, and stuff. So if you travel around uh, the valley, you have uh, monuments in Monta Vista, you have in Costilla County and uh, other areas. So I, I, and correct me if I'm wrong, that this we're looking at to, to make this a, a city of Alamosa and Alamosa County Memorial that will probably, uh, it'll represent, like I said, all the veterans in the whole San Luis Valley. Okay. okay. So can, can I respond to that, Mayor? Sure. Okay. So th I just, then I just got confused, I guess, by the answer to Councillor Broyles' question. So when we, obviously, all five branches will be represented, but also will there be names of other people than other than Alamosa County and Alamo City of Alamosa? And that's something and I, that you might jump in there, Steve, uh, in putting names in there. I, I understood that uh, on the floor, they're going to do that, like a brick type of deal on the floor where you can put your name there and, and buy a brick and stuff. Okay. stuff like right. That, so. And that may be a piece of the fundraising to, for sure. us. Um, we would probably not turn down anybody that wanted to buy oh, sure. a name plate or something like that. Sure. And so it's, in, um, in, in your question, it's pretty hard to, I mean, yes, it's primarily for Alamosa County and, uh, and the city, I mean, Alamosa itself, but it's pretty hard to narrow it down to just say it's only this group. If, if I really sure. wanted to go back and do it in the beginning, I would have got the whole valley before everybody started doing their own mm -hmm. and uh, we could have collaboratively done one mm -hmm. um, memorial thank thank you i i wasn't tr like i wasn't trying to yeah, yeah. okay any other comments before i have them have a seat so what is the total expected cost of this uh, memorial so um the ex total expected costs were about $505,000. A half a million dollars? Right. Okay. And I see your list of um, projections as far as the timeline for raising some of the funding. Um, how has it gone so far? Uh, have you stepped up your uh, campaign to where you can start getting more funding, or is this just the first step? So that's a great question. So uh, this is our first step. Our first goal is the $5,000 to construct the replica of what we're going to be constructing. And we feel that once we have that, then it's maybe more prudent to go to the businesses and say, this is, you can either buy this and we can use it in two ways, in a visual form of what it's gonna look like. And number two, maybe auction off those um, small uh, replicas. Any other questions of them right now? Anybody before we bring it back to discussion? Uh, Councilor Vigil. Would the replicas also be made by Huberto? I'm sorry, can you repeat that? Would the replicas be made by Huberto? Huberto, yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Councilor Carson? Um, again, I, I, I just. Oh, you yeah, waiting? I, I need to talk on the funding side. I think it's extremely okay. important. And I'm quite sure this question is going to come up, so I'm just going to ask you right now so we don't have to go. We're not going to be asking questions to, the, to you in the audience, okay? okay. But, and I really appreciate you all coming out here today and sharing your insight and working on what you're doing for the veterans. I think a memorial is uh, greatly needed in our community. Um, but for the sake of making sure that you leverage all of your funding that you receive, have you considered uh, other renderings other than the actual physical miniature model of what you're designing um, so that your monies can go a little bit further or are you set in stone on actually trying to get those models so that you can take them around well i think i think we're open to to both i mean i mean uh, we, we know that we're going to have to do some um the grant money we know that um and, and this is a part of why we haven't applied for any grants yet because most grants 
require, and I think it'll look better on paper, that we've raised an X amount of money ourselves prior to going to asking for somebody else for money. So I think between the grants, between the, the community efforts, the, um, the dinners that we listed on the back side, it's, it's gonna be a pretty aggressive um, number to go after, and uh, we're, we're all committed to make it happen. We think that this is a fairly um, um, achievable, attainable uh, number that, that we could work with. We're not gonna try and do it all in one year. And I know the numbers uh, that, that we gave, like the $153,000, is, is a straight number. Now, if we can go out and talk to some donations to help reduce that number, that's more money in our pocket or just lessens the cost of the whole thing. So yeah, we plan to try and get that $153,000 down to 20,000. <laughs> okay. So yeah, that's aggressive, but I mean, that's, that's our plan through the whole thing. Now, Herberto's sculptures are pretty well fixed at that number. Um, although he did say that he would do some in-kind to help us put it together and, and, and work with us on that. Okay. So. But thank you. I was just concerned making sure that we had realistic expectations. I know when we did the multi-purpose center, uh, there was some fundraising done and a lot of uh, contributions, and we didn't get nowhere near uh, the amount of money we thought we would get. We were somewhere in the area. What was it, Heather? Uh, Twenty to 30000 Twenty to 30000 So. I just wanted to make sure as we're looking at these budgets that we're looking at something that is realistic and achievable as we move forward. So to be fair to everyone who's participating in this. Sure. Okay. And that's reasonable. And we ex expect us to come back once we have the replica and, and give you an update of where we're at with the fundraising. And it's, we want to look at this as a, as a partnership with, with all of you. and. Um, potentially look at uh, something down the road to once we get further along with the project also. Okay. So. Thank, thank you so much. Councilor Griego. One comment if I admit, mm -hmm. my, Mary, I guess it, it needs to be pointed out that this is not a city or a county project. This is a community project that has, they were at, they asked uh, John V. Hill first to get on there and then I came on now afterwards being part of the city. So this is a community project. It's not, it's, even though there is members from the, from the commission and members from the council, so I think it, that needs to be pointed out too. And, and your question on, on the, uh, if we've looked at other uh, ways of, of maybe spending that 5,000, if you have something in front of you, it's easier to look at it and then ask uh, for some funding, you know? And that's what we threw, we talked about it a lot of different ways. Uh, how do we approach people out there and ask? You just can't go up there and ask, well, could you please uh, help us out and not have nothing, let, not something visual. Almost like when we built this building here, we had a visual where people came and looked at it and, and saw what it was gonna look like and that kind of helped people get, get into the, uh, to the support of it, so. Oh, good, thank you for bringing that up, Council Gregor. Right. I greatly appreciate that. I do have one question. Sure. What's the, what's your ETA on a model once you get the five thousand dollars? So um, he's thinking that by the end of March. I mean, he he said thirty days, but uh, he's saying you know by the end of March I should have something to you. Of course, we, uh, I think our next scheduled meeting is twenty um, eighth, twenty eighth of this month, and where we'll sit down and start uh, finalizing some of the drawings prior to him sculpting anything and could come to an agreement on it. And then once once uh, we're done with that, he's pretty quick about getting it done. Okay, 28th of February. Okay. 28th of February, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, sure. We have a, a wide variety of people on this committee. And you can, I think you listed the people that are on it, that some couldn't come. But one person, Matt Martinez, you know, really worked on the one in Monta Vista, and he's given us a lot of ideas for fundraising. So we started out kind of small, and it, you know, kept getting what we wanted to do. So I think with his help, that's where we kind of came up with this. But we have Adam State University's Veterans Club is in this. Uh, Helen Sigmund from the, she couldn't be here tonight, so that's why Mike came. We have a very wide variety of people that are on this committee and have stayed on this committee 
through all of our meetings where we've gone around in a lot of circles trying to decide what to do. You know, Steve from City Market, Frank, it's, it's a really good, solid people that are really committed to this. So okay. I wanted to add Thank that. You. Thank you very much. Okay, if we don't have any other questions, we're going to have you sit down. Oh, go ahead. Just one final sure. uh, comment. I think when you look at the numbers, uh, one important thing that, and that I, when I started on this committee, I started talking about this. And I, you look at the numbers, and they're big numbers. But I think in, in perspective, this is a forever project. I mean, it's not a, something that we're going to pack up and walk away. And, and after two years or three years or five years or ten years, it's a forever project. Um, and that's as you enter Alamosa, so that may help a little bit also. Okay, thank you so much, and Thanks. thank you for your presentation. Okay, Council, I'll bring it back to you, starting off with Councilor Carson. Can you speak uh, into the mic, please? Thank this, you. Is a, this is a little bit different than our usual funding requests, in being that it's not an event. Um, so I would suggest to Council that we do a budget amendment and give them the to kick it off so they can get that model going. They're asking three. Um, I thought it was a five. They're asking for three. Well, I would suggest that we do a budget amendment and not dip into our funding money. Because the funding money, we only have 10. And so, again, this isn't an event, but I think that maybe we should look at doing something to, to fill that request to get them going. Because, again, the sooner they have the model, the sooner they can approach other entities with something visual. So that'd be my suggestion to Councilor. Thank you. Councilor Daniel? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I do, I think this is a very worthy project. Heather and I had a conversation this morning, though, about a fund balance. Can you, can you explain that to Council? Because that doesn't require a budget amendment, does it? Or will it? It, it would require, a, 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 you can do a motion tonight authorizing us to do 3000 or, or whatever amount you deem, and then when we do our first budget amendment, would we just would included. just include that as part of the budget amendment. Okay. Thank you very much for the clarification. And then to, the, a little more clarification, the line item that, that Councillor Carson's referring to is the sponsorship line item that has just 10000 that we need to spread throughout the year for some of the other events, and so I, I believe that's... He, his recommendation is not to lower that by the 3,000, but instead to take it from our fund balance and do a budget amendment at a future date. Councilor Hensley. So what would that do to our fund balance? I, I think we can handle the 3,000. Okay, thank you. Just was making sure. Councilor Griegel. I, I, I never looked at it that way. I, I, we had that 10,000, and I, and I know there's a lot, a lot of people that are eventually going to come to that, but I, that's a good suggestion. And if that's the case, I'll, I'll make a motion that we go to our fund balance and, and take uh, $3,000 towards this project. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Okay, please start voting. Ms. Harley? The motion carried unanimously. Okay, thank you. Thank you all very much. We wish you much success. Okay, up next um, on the agenda, we have a sponsorship request for the SLV Rural Philanthropy Days Conference. Once again, we'll limit it to 10 minutes on your presentation. Hi, thank you, Mayor and Councilors. Um, my name is Jan Owen. This is Mick Daniels. We are part of the Rural Philanthropy Days Steering Committee, planning for Rural Philanthropy Days, which is commonly known as RPD. It will be in September. It is hosted this year by the town of Del Norte, but it serves all six counties of the San Luis Valley. Rural Philanthropy Days only happens every four years. Um, in 1991, let's see, um, forgetting her name, uh, Sue Andrews Rogers um, <laughs> said, it, she noticed um, as a grantor and a fundraiser from the, the, the Front Range that only 3% of the 
grant monies were going to rural Colorado. And she said that's got to change because there's certainly need in rural Colorado as well. Since then, she, the Anschutz Foundation and the Community Foundation, or no, Community, CRC, Community Resources Center out of Denver have formed this Rural Philanthropy Days. It happens every four years, um, but throughout eight regions of Colorado. So every year there's two RPDs. Um, since 1991, um, dollars have um, escalated to, I don't remember, um, quite, a few, <laughs> quite a few dollars. And um, I know out of the last two RPDs, about $23 million have come back into the San Luis Valley. Um, I at I've attended three of the RPDs in Alamosa 12 years ago, Sawatch eight years ago, Creed, Colorado, four years ago, and now working on the Del Norte um, RPD. And Mick will share some of the others. And so this is my first RPD. I, I got involved, as many of you know, I'm running a new nonprofit. We just actually got nonprofit status in April of 18. Um, before that, we were working under fiscal sponsorship of San Luis Valley Development Resources Group. We still have a strong relationship there. But, you know, one of the, as an executive director, it's really my first time being responsible for fundraising. It's a thing that keeps me awake at like 3 in the morning. I wake up mm -hmm. thinking about how I'm going to keep my employees paid. <laughs> and I feel like I've also been really fortunate. Uh, I've had a lot of support for the work that we're doing. Um, but tell you what, it's like one of the biggest challenges is learning how to ask for money and explain what you're trying to accomplish without really drifting from what your mission is. Uh, it's really easy to get sucked into this, well, I just need the money, so I'll do whatever the funder wants me to do so I have it. Uh, and the other really difficult part, surprisingly, is actually having the opportunity to meet funders, um, especially being in a rural community like San Luis Valley. There, there are some uh, foundations that pass through here fairly regularly, um, but the far majority don't. Uh, and that's one of the things that I became interested in RPD for. That clock always gets me. <laughs> The countdown time but uh, it's one of the things that draw, drew my interest and, and I chose to be on the fundraising thing because I'm trying to get better at asking for money um, and I had a good day today so hopefully I have a <laughs> continue this streak <laughs> but um, I think the important thing to look at of that 23 million uh, in the last eight years that's come in after RPD 17 million has come in for Alamosa County specifically uh, the nonprofits that are operating here um, and so tonight, we're really just asking you to, to think about making an investment in that future for nonprofits in Alamosa County. Um, you, know, if, you know, if you came in at the silver level at $1,000, I mean, basically, you're looking at a $2.2 .2 million return per year on that 1000 Seems like a no-brainer. <laughs> um, and it, if you look at the number of employees employed currently by the nonprofits, the number of projects we have moving, and I can just speak of the projects I have alone, but... You know, in the last year, we brought in more than a million dollars to Alamos County in particular for youth programming and the trails and other projects. Um, so I, I think it's a pretty big investment and a, really a small ask to make for the amount of return that's potential from that. Now, as nonprofits, we all have to go out there and do our work and make those ask and uh, align our programs with those funders. Uh, so like any investment, there's no surefire guarantee. But overall, uh, I, since... RPD started, we've increased the total giving to rural Colorado to 36 million, and the San Luis Valley is getting 10% of that. We'd all love to see that number go up. We certainly have the need in our communities, uh, certainly with the opioid and everything else we have going on. Um, so that's kind of the overreaching goal is like, let's tell that story. The other thing I think that's really important and that I would like for you all to consider, even if you came in at the silver level, which is $1,000 is that it'd be great if you all attended uh, because I really, really would appreciate y'all's support and your, and your stories about the work that's being done in Alamosa. And I think that goes a long way with a funder, more than me just sitting there and telling the story of SLV Go, uh, hearing from our community members and the council about what that looks like for the city. Okay. All right. Jen? I was just going to say, I know that you received this in your packet, but if you want a hard copy, I do have. Okay, thank you. Councilor Vigil. Thank you, Mayor. Councilor Daniel. Uh, what, <clears throat> if we give to this project, what, what would you do with the money? 
<clears throat> so this is for general operating of running this event. Uh, so we need to raise about $40,000. Right now we've identified about $20,000 of ask, but really, really just getting started with that process. Um, most of that, it lies on the entire steering committee. Like we're all signing up to talk to different businesses and counties and cities. Uh, obviously it's being hosted in Rio Grande County, so certainly we're going before them. I'm not specifically, but I don't know who is off the top of my head right now. Uh, but we're all working through all the counties to kind of do an ask. We're also approaching businesses. Um, we think it's an attainable number. That, that helps keep the cost down for nonprofits to attend. After all, they are nonprofits and often operating at this level is one of the things they don't have a lot of extra for. So the more we raise, the less, the more nonprofits contend for a better value, so to speak. Yeah. Councilor Daniel. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I've been to all the same RPDs you have, Jan. <laughs> okay. uh, so it, it's been wonderful as um, previously working in a nonprofit, I had um, received grants through this process. Mm -hmm. um, I think RPD is a great thing. I've worked with CRC. I've been a consultant for them on a different thing and have done some other things. So I think this is one of the best run um, conferences of its kind mm -hmm. in the community. And so I, I want to say that because I think RPD is a, amazing, an amazing event mm -hmm. um, regardless. I think this does go to kind of what we were speaking about earlier. So I'm just mm -hmm. going to bring that up. Um, we have $10,000 of sponsorship money yeah. um, recently we've decided to look at that differently as a council and have said we kind of want to have a like process that we do versus for kind of it has been like first come first serve and mm -hmm. ha we haven't felt like that's done very well for us um, that we've missed some things that we could have I guess would be the best way to say that um, and so I think this is a valuable opportunity and I would like us to see us start a new process and because this is an event I would like us to not potentially council make a decision on that tonight, but really kind of try to start our process with this and encourage you to be a part of that process is, is what my thought would be on this right now. So that's just my. Council Brawl. Can you kind of give a, it's a three day It is event. a three day event. Can you kind of give a, right. a lowdown of what the programs are? And I what would be happy to. The first day it's usually a social event um, where Funders can meet with nonprofits and face-to-face -face socialize, not, not talk about programs or anything. Uh, day two is generally capacity building. There are workshops throughout the day um, from as simple as, as how to write a grant to how to run a board meeting, how to use social media, um, other things. There's generally a, um, oh, a keynote speaker, um, innovative, ideas and then day three is what they call um, kind of speed dating uh, in in the fundraising you as a nonprofit I would meet with funders and I'd have two minutes to do my little spiel they would say yes you I mean they would give you kind of either a go-ahead or we need more information or no this is just not going to fit so that's kind of the a real quick down and dirty Thank you. You're welcome. And um, from your experience, about how many people participate and ah, attend that event? Thank you. There's over 200 nonprofits that um, participate in about 40 of the front range funders. Okay. And, and sometimes government, um, you know, last time we had to track specifically for government. So do they research like the area to see how many hotels are available before they, they come to an area? Yeah, there's a, out of the steering committee, there is, um, there's kind of four legs. Uh, one is hospitality and they're responsible for making sure there's enough lodging for people. Uh, we have the fundraising, um, we have programs and uh, marketing, those four areas. Okay, all righty. Thank you. Council, any other questions before I have them have a seat? No? Okay, thank you so very much thank for you. your presentation. Thank you. Council, I'll bring this back to you. Councilor Daniel, Daniel had some comments, and I'll bring it back to you all for your comments. Councilor Carson. Uh, I agree with Councilor Daniels. I think this is a good opportunity for us to start our, our application process uh, and move forward and have them submit that, and we can go start addressing those applications. Okay, Councilor Beal. I agree with you, Mr. Carson. Just one thing I want to add to that is uh, we 
kind of got to get going on this because there are events coming up soon and how do we line that up and talk about it and have a pecking order and that type of stuff with events that might be coming up in the fall and, and next winter. So, okay. So, Councilor Daniel. Uh, thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Um, I believe, and maybe this doesn't answer your question, Councilor Hill, but that's what we're going to talk about in 2C. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you. Okay. Up next, we have a presentation from Alamosa County to request to waive water assessment fees. Please come up to the podium. Mayor, as, as they're coming up, if I could just, Mick, as you're leaving, um, they're discussing the process tonight, and I can send you an update tomorrow or the next day on what that's going to look like, so you guys are a part of that. I just want to make sure that was clear before okay. they left the room. Thank you. Hello again. How are you doing, Commissioner? Mike Leon, Alamosa County Commissioner. I'm not asking for money, just a waiver. <laughs> <laughs> Alamosa County is requesting a waiver of $24,519.74, which is the assessment based on the estimated consumption of water use for the Alamosa County Annex Building, the Justice Center, in Rio Grande Water Conservation District. To provide you a little history on the property, and some of you know it, uh, Councilman Boyles and Grego, there used to be an old sawmill out there. And before my time, the commissioners before me had the foresight to purchase uh, 54.9 acres of property to expand the county services and creating economic development on the south side of Alamosa. <coughs> Uh, if you look at the map there, and I know you can't, it isn't real clear, but you can kind of follow that as I uh, show you how, the, how it had grown. Uh, the county had the infrastructure installed in 2001, and we tied the water and sewer at Road 9 and the 109. <coughs> the city lines only went out to the recreational center and we expanded the water and sewer so the red road and bridge building could be built out there. It was the first one. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, we also cleaned up the old sawmill out there that was, uh, uh, thank you, Ernie Young sawmill, and there was a lot of cleanup that had to be done out there, and it was quite an eyesore coming into Alamosa. Uh, Sold some property to the San Luis Valley Behavioral Health and they built a new facility and they served as the anchor to get the infrastructure built in the area. County Administration and Public Health facility was built in 2002 and we, there was some property that was sold to CDOT to extend, expand their needs for their shops. There was also property sold to the city of Alamosa for their public works facility that's there. And a good example of working together, the food bank was built with lots of community support and in-kind services. As we call, recall, the city de donated the water and sewer tap fees. However, the county had to raise the funds to pay for the lift station, sewer, and water lines. The county annexed the property into the city except for the behavior of health in 2013, and the annex was completed in 2014. Some property was sold to Rio Grande Water Conservation District for their offices. And finally, at this point, the Justice Center was built and occupied this past October. Now, the county, county's actual cost uh, from developing phases of the subdivision and when the administration building in 2002 was built uh, they had the water of hundred and fifty three thousand six hundred and fifty dollars we had sewered a hundred and five thousand eight hundred and thirty one dollars we had lift stations of forty three thousand dollars natural gas at forty thousand five hundred sixty eight there are two street lights out there for $3,069 that we still pay the monthly fees for. Uh, hydrants of $8,891 and the asphalt for $350,000. That's over a million dollars that was put into that.
property. The county is asking the city council to waive the as assessed water charge. Please recognize that the same taxpayers are paying for these assessments. It's the taxpayers that are paying for this. The People's Place subdivision is an example of the growth of our community enjoys and spreads some of the economic development to the south end of the city limits. Uh, I thank you for your consideration, and again, I think the biggest thing that I can say, we're not asking for free water or anything. We still have the water bills coming in all the time, and they're being paid. But the amount of in infrastructure that we have put out there, uh, you know, we, we're very proud of it. And we're not debating the fee. We know what it, what it costs and everything, but it's just the taxpayers are the ones paying for it. So you're taking it out of this pocket and putting it in this pocket, uh, you know, it's just, I don't see why we're doing it, and I'd really like to have you consider waiving these fees. Not that we're going to get free water or anything. We're paying for the water. We have the, the bills every month, and we keep current on it, so that's not the ask. Thank you for your consideration. Okay, thank you. At this time, Council, I'm going to allow you to uh, ask some questions of Commissioner Young, and then after that, I believe staff had some uh, written uh, council comments in this area, and staff, I'll ask you if you could um, bring that up so that we can go over that as well. But at this moment, right now, I'll let Council ask any questions that you have of Commissioner Young. Me, or we also have our county administrator, and we have, Gigi, uh, here. Gigi as she well, may, if you all would like to may have any comments. Also, so, anyway, we can. Councilor Brawls. Yeah, how long has this water assessment issue been in the forefront or known about? For the assessment? Yeah. Uh, two years, I believe. It's what, their year when it came to our. We'll look the. Gigi Dennis, County Administrator. So there was an agreement way back when this was all set up, and I can't recall the exact date of the letter that came from the city, but the city just recently notified us that it hadn't been paid. So we've gone all of these years with it being forgotten from both, both parties, and, and so if you guys hadn't missed it, we're asking that it be forgiven at this point. Any other questions? Council, thank you all so very much, and you can have a seat, and we'll bring it back to council for discussion sh shortly after. Um, staff, in there, um, Heather, if you could present your uh, council comments that you relate to us. Okay, thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Um, I just wanted to, to share a little bit of the what's in the council communication, as well as some additional information that um, I've pulled together. Um, essentially. If you think not related to any entity, but council has the philosophy in that that development pays for itself. So when you look at our annexation agreements, they, as a routine boilerplate, include the language that either the entity that's annexing in will either bring the water with them or they will pay an assessment fee for what we anticipate that that, that will be. When they pay that assessment fee is sometimes done at different times because sometimes when the annexation is occurring, they know what the development is and it moves very quickly and other times they're just annexing in and it may be several years similar to this project that, that you have a build out and, and you don't know what the consumptive use is going to be. Um, the annexation um, agreement that's before council for this item tonight um, was signed in 2014. And it was, as we were looking through our annexation agreements, the different ones related to the airport and then um, one related to another development, that we realized we had not collected on some of those fees. And it's a process that we are correcting, but it does not mean that it's not something that costs the city just because it's not something we haven't collected on. Um, so as we looked at those, um, there were the three buildings um, that were identified through this annexation agreement that was signed by the county in 2014 that would um, 
be required for that water assessment fee. And so you have the annex building, which is estimated at 7425 the courthouse, and this is without us knowing what the landscaping is, but for the indoor consumptive use is 14,818. The Rio Grande Water Conservation District building is 2,276, and the food bank is 1,206. And as we looked at these numbers, we did have an executive session with council in regards to um, knowing our history of how we waive the tap fees and sometimes the plant investment fees. We didn't want to begin this discussion if it was something that council felt that it might also waive here um, type of thing. And during that executive session, council was clear that this is something they probably did not want to waive. That does not mean you can't change your mind tonight. Um, but it was something that we did want to get council direction before communicating with the county. The other direction that we received from council is considering, um, as the commissioner has pointed out in the food bank, the nature of that project, that there's a lot of public donations and, and those types of things. And additionally, it's a low consumptive use. It's essentially a warehouse with one bathroom. Um, they, we felt maybe that is one that we, we could waive um, type of situation and council was in agreement with that. The third item that we received direction from council was since we had not built this immediately on when these buildings were built, that um, what we could look at is a payment plan because this is something the county maybe wasn't thinking about and it didn't need to be paid all at one time. I think the other thing that created a little bit of confusion from our process side is this annexation was a little bit different in that the building permits weren't being pulled through the city and that is sometimes what our trigger is to charge some of these these fees because part of this annexation agreement had it to where the county was handling the construction part of it and their own inspections and their own issuance of a certificate of occupancy so there is some differences there in regards to what triggers from a from a city process and and those types of things as well so what we did do is um, we communicated with the county attorney what those, what those um, assessments would be. We have reduced those. Our, our older annexation agreements, I believe, had an exorbitant amount of what they would need to pay per acre foot. Um, but now that we've gone through this um, augmentation plan process and we've had to purchase water rights, we, we have a much better feel for what those costs are. So we were able to reduce that amount as well um, than what it would have been even a year ago. And when we communicated, we were initially given the impression that um, they wanted to double check those numbers. They reviewed their bills and, and did a, a pretty thorough process to, to make sure those estimates were accurate. I think they found out that they were and we're all in agreement on those items as shared with the, with the commissioner. So then um, based on some emails, we were given the impression that it's a matter of going through their budget process, working out how they would make those payments and, and those types of things. And then we did receive the letter um, in November requesting that those amounts be waived. Um, from a staff perspective, we do disagree in regards to some of the logic of, of who's going to carry the burden of this. Um, essentially, there is a burden. Someone will have to pay for this. It's a real cost. Um, and it's a matter of shifting it from the estimated county residents of 15,000, of which we have city residents who are a portion, but it's a total of 15,000, or we will shift it entirely onto our utility customers, which is 3,400. Um, so it's, it's shifting a much bigger burden onto a smaller group of people instead of it being spread out appropriately over the developer. Um, we, as always with any developer and the county is no different we appreciate any type of development we appreciate the investment that goes into taking property and and enhancing it with the public infrastructure and and all of that just like any other developer when they're doing similar types of development projects um, but it's something that we have the philosophy that development needs to pay for itself and it's not being the burdens not going on to existing utility customers and so for those reasons staff would recommend that we do not waive the fees okay. oh the other information i was able to um, identify and it is in regards to the courthouse and the annex building 
council has already waived 35,000 for those projects and plant investment fees. I was not able to track down the cost of the tap fees, um, but we have contributed um, already significantly to, to waiving of some of these fees. And again, that's, that's further reason for us not to continue putting that burden on just the 3,400 utility customers that we have. Okay. Thank you, Heather. Okay, Council, I'll bring it back to you for your comments. Councilor uh, V. Hilde and Councilor Brawls. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Heather, when was this uh, executive session where we gave you direction? Was it in 14? It had to be, right? No, it was this year. This year. It was just a few months ago. Probably August. It was, yeah, August. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Brawls. Uh, just, just for clarification, did, did the Rio Grande Water Conservative District pay their assessment or, and in the food bank, did you say they paid it or it's just been assessed? No, so one, no, the Rio Grande, we, the, the agreement is with the county, so we're asking the county for that portion of the property for the Rio Grande building of 2,276. Um, what we discussed was waiving the food bank of 1,206 because it, that was a community project. Council Daniel. Uh, thank you, Mayor. So I, th I think I, I spoke to this when, um, if I'm remembering correctly, and maybe not, the when we waived some of the TAP fees um, before, that I had had a concern um, about that, and I had I still have the, the same concern with this. Um, I appreciate the county's partnership, I, I, so I don't want that to be a, a, a thing, but I do feel like this is, this is a necessary part of development. Um, and I do feel like I, I do disagree with you, Commissioner Yon, about it just being from one taxpayer to another taxpayer. I, I, I think there is a difference um, between 15,000 people paying for it versus the $3,100 or 3,400 utility customers paying for it. Um, and so I, I would not be in favor of waiving this tonight. Councilor Hensley. So I echo what um, Councilor Daniel says, and I, I, I just think the idea that this is a county situation, and again, appreciating our partnerships and everything uh, the county does and beautifying that area for sure is awesome. But I also agree that idea that it does need to be spread out then for all the county residents versus just the city residents, which then, or not even just the city residents, but the people that um, are the utility uh, payers. Um, and so it is something I do think also that should be spread out amongst everybody in the county. Councilor Brawls. Well, I think, you know, I think uh, there is some argument that you're taking some money from one pocket, putting the other pocket. I'd like to see us, you know, have some consideration with the county. Because I think they, I think we go back and forth. They benefit us, we benefit them, vice versa. And, uh, you know, I'd like to give some consideration to them. And, um, maybe maybe a lower amount. Uh, I, um, I usually start 50-50 whenever I come to something like this. We go 50-50, but uh, I think we ought to give them some consideration. Council Griego. So you're saying that is the food bank, the, the 1,206, is that, is that part of the 24 also? No, no, we did not add that into the 24 since the direction from council was not to do that. So all we did was the 2,276 with the Rio Grande Water Conservation District, the 7,425 for the annex, and the 14,818 for the courthouse. That's what comprises the, four, the 24,000. Well, I, I, I kind of tend to agree with the David Broyles. I, I think we're both in the same business and I, I, and I think that we should be able to work, try to find a, a, a good medium where, you know, just as Commissioner Yon says, we're, we're charging the same people the same amount of money. And I understand the uh, 15,000 versus the, uh, the 3,400. So uh, we could find some way to work with them. I, I, would, I would be in favor of that. Councilor Daniel. Thank you, Mayor. I, I appreciate what um, Councillor Broyles and Councillor Griego are saying. Um, the 35,000 is a solid number, though. That's already been waived, correct? Okay. 
It's been more than 35. Um, that was just the plant investment fees. Unfortunately, I was in between meetings today trying to track down the TAP fees that we also waived. So it's, it's more than 35,000 that we've already waived in regards to con contributing to these projects. So 35 plus 25 is 60, and so we're already at over half. I'm just, I'm just doing math in my head real quick. Um, and so I just want to point that out, that some of the costs that they've had that would have been theirs have already been waived by the city. And so it feels like to me that we've met them halfway. And so I'm just going to throw that out there. Because I think consideration is necessary. I, I agree with you. But I don't think this is just a standalone issue. Thank you, Councilor Danny. Councilor Beal. Thank you, Mayor. Heather, could you maybe comment on any um, actions by the county where they've maybe waived things for us or helped us out with certain things in the past, maybe usage of equipment or anything like that? I hate to put you on the spot like that, but. Um, yeah, so, so we've, we've used some equipment, but we've, we've paid rates for, for that equipment and, and those types of things. The most immediate project um, is they have, they provided 20000 to the Sheffis property from their CTF. So those are dedicated funds that have to be spent on trails, parks those types of things. And so as you heard from Dieter, when they were doing the fundraising, not only was it GoCo and Lore, but SLV Health locally contributed to that. The county contributed 20,000, the city contributed 20,000. Um, so they did participate in that project. They dedicate staff time to a lot of joint projects. Um, so we've had a lot of um, involvement on our comp plan, our downtown plan. Um, Rachel's heavily involved, as well as um, some other partnership discussions in the community. Um, I know Gigi's on the Economic Summit Planning Committee and, and those types of things. So they are heavily involved in, um, from a resource person perspective. But um, in regards to money directly to the city or waiving of fees, there's nothing that's necessarily coming to mind other than that 20000 But if you want to, if, if I'm forgetting something. Councilor Carson. Um, I, I don't necessarily think <clears throat> we should get in a back and forth. I mean, we, we had already come to terms with this and agreed on it. I mean, I get your guys' point on the you know, uh, giving some. That wasn't what we were approached with. Um, and I think, you know, from a voting standpoint, we had already agreed that those fees needed to be paid. Um, you know, we'd have to probably just put it to a straight vote. Okay. Yeah, we have donated quite a bit, and again, not not affecting the relationship at all. But I think do, uh, waiving the food bank was a, a good gesture, and this is pretty much a, a straight a straight fee that we need to get taken care of. I mean, the fact that we overlooked it for a couple years would give me the inclination to to give a little if possible, but um, it's it's still pretty straightforward. Okay. I think Thank the councilor Hanson. Thank I think you. the other challenge, too, is we're at a point where we're raising our utilities. Um, we've had a lot of issues, obviously, with costs going up and obviously reevaluating the utilities and making sure that we're covering all of the large costs of keeping the, the upkeep of everything we're doing. So the challenge I have, and again, I do really appreciate everything in our, our relationships with the county, but the challenge I have is that we're raising our rates, but then at the same time having a situation where we're saying, but we're going to give something away. Um, and again, it's, it's that idea of the smaller amount are paying for it when it is something that is benefiting a larger amount. And so that for me is also a little bit of the hard time I'm having with the idea of doing that right now. Okay, and before we go on, um, when Heather um, had made her comment a few minutes ago, Gigi raised her hand to respond to it, but uh, you two started talking. So Heather, she had, when you had asked for something, she raised her hand, but okay. they started talking. So if you want to just come up real quick and say what you're going to say, but we're not going to be going back and forth with questions and comments. Okay, can I just talk loud? Yes.
and I, so that's very accurate. So I want to thank, thank her for, for bringing that up, especially Road and Bridge and our, our public works crews work very closely together. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Gigi. And now we can continue. I apologize. Go ahead. Uh, Councilor Daniel. Thank, thank you, Mary. Thank you, uh, Gigi, for that. I appreciate you um, sharing that with us. Um, so I, am, I work in my personal life and professional life and hopefully my council life to be as um, equitable as possible. We recently had another discussion about an annexation agreement that was old and that people had struggles with and, and we enforced that as a council. Um, and so I want to just remind us of that, that it's, it wasn't the county who was our partner in that, but it, it was someone who was doing development and bringing things into the city and um, we, were, we were pretty pretty firm on that one. And so I just want to remind that was a pretty recent conversation. Okay, Council Danny, thank you. Council Brawls. Well, no, my concern continues to be a lack of clarity. Like two years ago, this should have been addressed and agreed upon. And apparently there's, again, a lack of clarity between the parties. And uh, that's my concern, that this has to come back two years later because we weren't clear or, or the parties weren't clear. The, the, Councilor Broyles, the, there's no question on the annexation agreement and no one is making the claim that there is confusion. It's we did not necessarily send them a bill right when they pulled it. Um, but as far as the amounts or what's due, there is no lack of clarity in regards to that. Um, the other thing I want to make sure there's two points. Eric was able to track down the tap fees that have been waived, and so it's probably approximately ten thousand dollars as well that have been waived. Um, and then the other is I want to make sure we're clear. It's clear in the communication, and I know I, I said it once, but I I, I want to make sure it doesn't get lost. The estimate for the the courthouse is. Um, not 100% complete until we know what the landscaping is in there. So some of that, that mathematical formula is dependent on what the landscaping is. So that amount in there for the courthouse is just for the consumptive use internally. Councilor Carson, thank you, Heather. Um, I agree with Councilor Royals about the timing, uh, and that was why I said I'd be willing to concede some, but um, from the standpoint of us being able to decide right now, I think if we were going to give any sort of concession, it would have to probably come from the county in the, in the form of you know something coming back to us asking for that concession, uh, because I don't I don't feel comfortable waiving it all. I don't I, I believe that at that you know we should at least get half. But again, if it's going to become a negotiation and we're going to have to to discuss this further, I think the county should probably come back at us with whatever they feel is fair from that standpoint. That's my opinion. You know, instead of us just making the call. I mean, Councilor, um, you, are you finished, Councilor? No, go ahead. That was just okay, Councilor Hensley. Can I just get one clarification? Um, it was mentioned, and I just want to make sure I understood it. When um, the initial agreement, it was actually thought that a higher amount would be paid. Is that what you were saying, that the numbers have changed? It was 20,000 an acre foot compared to we've lowered it to five. <laughs> So in a way, there's a benefit that we didn't charge. So in a way, I mean, I, I know it doesn't make it any better, but it, if they had paid it on time, they would have paid a lot more. Y yes, and, uh, and honestly, it's probably something that when we corrected this, we would look at trying to get some of that money back because okay. that 20000 would not have been an appropriate number. So we, we would have actually, even at that time, not taken that much or given it back if it's seen that way. Okay, thanks. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm, let, me, let me just make sure I'm correct on these numbers now. So far, we've already waived an upwards of over $60,000? No, so it's, it's um, thank you for clarifying. It is 35000 in plant investment fees and another 10000 in TAP fees. So we've already waived 45000 Okay, good. Okay, so for me with this, the challenge I have with this is because we've had these conversations as a council and uh, we've talked about development, paying for development. We've talked about trying to be fair. We've talked about concessions and things like that. Um,
but I struggle because um, when we're talking about being fair, it's hard for me to see how is it fair for us to spread the cost uh, amongst 3,400 people versus 15,000 people. Kind of like what Councillor Hensley brought up, our utility customers are already experiencing increases in their utility bills. Just the other day, a gentleman approached me and he said, please tell me, how is it fair for us to continue to have increase in our utility costs and not spread this pro cost that you all are going to be talking about in the meeting the, um, uh, uh, amongst 15,000 or so people in the county? Why do you keep making our rates go up when you have an opportunity as a council member to make a difference and spread it out to be fair? And what I've gotten from the constituents in the community is that they just want us to be fair. Now, when we're talking about the 24,000 519, this is not a made up number. It's a real cost to the city. So I want to make sure that we're clear on that too. And that cost will be passed on to the utility customer. So we can't take this lightly like we're, we're not, not really like, experiencing this cost. Am I correct in saying that, Heather? That is correct. The other issue I have in the climate that we're in right now, experiencing with water crisis in our community, and as a city, we're trying to do our due diligence to manage uh, costs as we move forward with our water augmentation plan. Right now, we've spent a lot of money trying to address those issues, and I don't know about you, but those are real dollars that we are spending. When we bypass uh, fees, that money still coming from our customers, our clients. I just want to make sure that council is aware that this cost is passed on to our constituents. Do you want to be fair with our constituents and spread the cost amongst everyone who's uh, experiencing uh, the use of these facilities or do you want to just pass it on to our constituents once again making them carry the burden of the load of this cost. So I just want you to make sure that you keep that in your thoughts as we move forward. I appreciate everything that the county's done. I appreciate the working relationships we have. We have to have those collaboration, uh, working relationship, but as county commissioners, as city, uh, um, um, county um, managers, and, and you all are conscious of what we have to deal with as well to be fair amongst all of our constituents. That's something that all the council have to deal with. And when we walk around the community, we have to be able to explain to the people how we're being fair in this process. And that's all I want us to do is make sure that you think about what you believe is fair. And when you vote, vote on what you think is fair or you don't think is fair. Just vote the way you feel. Any other comments? Councilor Daniel. Uh, thank, thank you, Mayor. Um, with that, I move that we deny the request from Alamosa County to waive the water assessment fees in whole. Councilor Hensley. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Councilor Brawls. Well, you know, I, I agree. I don't think we can waive the full amount. But I'd like to maybe see a negotiated amount, but we agree with Councilman Carson. The, let that amount come from the county to, to negotiate a different amount. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Okay, please start voting. Ms. Holly? The motion carried six to one with Councilor Griego casting the no vote. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, up next we have on the agenda uh, under police. Heather, will you be talking about the purchase of those uh, radios? No, Chief Anderson okay. will be making his way up Thank and you. will provide the presentation. Thank you. Mayor, Council, good evening. <clears throat> 
So just a quick rundown. Uh, we currently have 27 police fleet vehicles. Out of the 27 vehicles, we only have two of those vehicles which are equipped with the new Motorola APX 4500 in car digital radio. Uh, the radios which our patrol units are equipped with <coughs> are anywhere from 10 to 15 years old and the replacement parts are no longer being produced. Over the last month and a half, we've had two high-speed pursuits in which the older in-car radios in our units failed to transmit the officer's communication during the pursuit. This is concerning to me as it could be an officer's safety issue and a safety concern to the community as well. Because our job as police officers, we rely on communication with dispatch as well as our fellow officers. So I am requesting council approve the purchase of 10 radios to begin the re replacement process of our, of our fleet vehicles. So these radios cost approximately $3,500 a piece. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Council Carson. Uh, I don't know how much we've got to discuss this. I think this is kind of a no-brainer. We need to make a motion to approve this request. Are you making that motion? I will make a motion to <laughs> approve the... Uh, and then, the Councilor Carson, for when we're recording this and replaying it back on YouTube and stuff, if you can make sure you're using your microphone, that will oh, really okay. help. Thank you. Okay, I'd like to make a motion authorizing the purchase of 10 police radios. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Not please start voting. Ms. Holly? The motion carried unanimously. Okay, thank you, Chief. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Up next, we have a public hearing and a second reading of ordinance number 2 2019, an ordinance amending section 11 43 of the disorderly conduct and 11 99, trespass of the code of ordinances of the city of Alamosa to classify certain actions as trespass rather than disorderly conduct. I assume that's you, Eric. It is, thank you, Mayor. As you will recall, the first reading uh, at your last meeting, I indicated that this is pretty much a housekeeping kind of ordinance because the kinds of actions that are denominated as disorderly conduct seem to fall more naturally under the kinds of actions that are denominated trespass for these two particular subcategories, and that is re remaining on the premises when you've been told to leave, um, and also going on the premises when you've been given a written order that you may not enter the premises. Both really kind of seem like trespass. This recategorizes them as trespass. Thank you, Eric. At this time, I will open up for a public hearing of the second reading of ordinance number 2-2019. Um, do we have anyone in the audience who would like to make any comments about this ordinance? If so, please come up to the podium. Okay, doesn't look like anyone's coming to the podium. So I will now close the public hearing and bring it back to council. Councilor uh, Grego and then Councilor Daniel. If there's no further questions, I'll make the motion we approve ordinance number two, 2019. Oh, I'll second. Okay, I'll we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Please start voting. Okay, Ms. Holly. The motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Up next, we have resolution, resolution number two 2019, a resolution approving and an amended schedule of fines for municipal violations. Is that um, you, Eric? Me again, Mayor. Yeah. This matter actually came to uh, the attention of staff in municipal court when there was, a, there was actually a violation of a, our ordinance which says that you have to stop for a school bus when the lights are flashing and the stop sign is out, that's when the kids are embarking or disembarking at a, at a bus stop. And we had a very young, I think 17 year old driver blow through that at what the bus driver said was a high rate of speed. Um, and she was appropriately sentenced by, um, by the judge and then her family or her father was unhappy because he said, hey, she got a harsher sentence than if she had just come to the counter and paid her fine. And um, that caused staff to say, wow, why is she able to just come to the counter and pay a fine 
for something like this. And so Chief Anderson and I um, looked at the schedule of fines, which is a schedule for generally for traffic offenses and for some other municipal offenses that sets out what the fine um, will be for certain fines and you can just come to the counter and pay your fine. You don't go through the court process really at all. Um, this one, the school bus uh, issue, and also being more than 20 miles an hour over the speed limit in a school zone were both um, things that you can currently just go to the counter and pay your fine on that Chief Anderson and I thought would be more appropriately brought to court for the judge to make a consideration of the appropriate kind of penalty for violation of those uh, statutes. So this resolution pulls those two items out of the schedule of fines. Uh, they're still in there, but they say it's a summons to court. It's not a set fine. So you gotta show up in court and the judge will issue an appropriate uh, penalty for that. And that penalty, by the way, could include, rather than just paying a fine, it could include uh, uh, being required to complete a, a live at 25 driving course or a defensive driving course or useful public service or something like that. Any combination thereof. Thank you, Eric. Uh, Councilor Vigil. Again, I think another, another no-brainer, I move that we adopt resolution number 2-2019. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any further comments? I just want to make one quick comment. Oh, sorry, Councilor Daniel. Oh, thank you. I just wanted to thank Mayor, or thank the Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> um, wanted to thank Eric and Holly and the team that, that caught this, um, and the Chief. I think this is very important. Um, so thank you so much for recognizing that this needs to be something that we take very seriously. So thank you. And I'm glad that we are sending a strong message to the community to let them know that the safety of our kids and residents is important. So thank you. Start voting. Ms. Holly? The motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Up next under item two, we have um, city manager legal, public hearing and a second reading of ordinance number 1-2019. Is that you, Eric? It is for the last time, however, tonight. Okay. Uh, and again, this was discussed with council on first reading. It, it will enable uh, nonprofit organizations to hold events within the city that combine, um, combine is the wrong word, uh, events at which, <laughs> events at which alcohol may be sold and consumed where um, uh, deadly weapons and uh, typically being firearms may be present uh, and this is under certain limited circumstances. Uh, again, a, an ordinance change that is driven by a particular circumstance, this one being the NRA wanting to hold their um, fundraiser at which they, they sell alcohol and also auction off firearms. And so um, as Chief Anderson mentioned to you during the first reading, there will be a number of safety provisions with respect to those kinds of events that he will have to sign off on before his office issues a permit for conducting such an event under this ordinance. But this ordinance does give the ability for that to happen within the city of Alamosa, which currently it cannot. Okay, thank you, Eric. At this time, I open up the uh, public hearing for the second reading of ordinance number one 2019, an ordinance amending section 11-120 of the Code of Ordinances for the City of Alamosa to allow the display and sale and auction of unloaded firearms at special events where liquor may be sold. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to come up to the podium? Please come up here and make your comments. Okay, it doesn't look like we have anyone in the audience, really, except, okay, all right. Now, um, I would close the public hearing. We, okay. All right, I'll bring it back to um, council since we don't have anyone in the audience who's have any comments. Um, Mayor, I move that we approve ordinance number 1-2019. Okay. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? If not, please start voting. 
Ms. Holland. The motion carried unanimously. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Council. Up next on the agenda, we have the CML Municipal Hero nomination. Heather. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I don't know, I guess I may not get the no-brainers. You might have to talk about this one. Um, the Colorado Municipal League has created the Municipal Hero Award as a way to recognize everyday heroes in the communities. Um, in 2016, we nominated Matt Abbey for his work with Boy Scouts in the creation of the local Rocket Club and were ecstatic when he was selected at the state level to receive that award. The next year, we nominated the Honeycuts for their coordination of the Alamosa Roundup and Alamosa Christmas Parade of Lights. They were not selected, but we still did get some promotion of Alamosa and, and their um, efforts through that process. The, in 2018, the city council elected to um, nominate Chief Oaks. He also was not selected, but again, the, it was a good recognition for Chief Oaks and, and did get mentioned at the state level. So um, what we have before you tonight are names that remain from that discussion in 2018 that were on that list. I only received one additional name to add, which was Jamie Dominguez. Um, you can pick from this list, you can pick a different name, or you can decide not to submit anybody this year. Um, it is open to whatever direction council wants to do. If you do want to submit someone, though, we do need to know who that is so we can get it written up and submitted by the deadline. Thank you, Heather. Council? Council V. Hill. Thank you, Mayor. Welcome. So um, last year I brought forth the name Ruthie Brown, and this year I, I emailed when Heather sent out an email for nominations. I also brought up uh, Jamie Dominguez. So for me, it would be the, either of those two. Uh, when I think of Ruthie, I think of um, all the... Um, fundraisers that she organizes for uh, many of our uh, terminally ill uh, children in town. And um, I appreciate that she cares so much about our community, especially the look of our community. And that kind of forces us sometimes to put, she's, I think some of her efforts along with others made us uh, create a budget item to uh, beautify our, our town. And um, I know she does things to help out those who are mentally handicapped as well. She also has organized a night at her business uh, for cancer, cancer relief funding. So that's Ruthie Brown. And then uh, Jamie, uh, Ms. Thomas, you said a couple meetings ago about how much he does. Mm -hmm. um, I, met, I had breakfast with him the other day at his, at his shop. And he t told me about all the things that he's getting into and how it's going to really pop off here in town with helping our youth and how they uh, also can take pride in our community, how they can, uh, how he, he wants to provide different avenues for students and kids uh, to get away from the drugs um, and get into community service, athletics, um, all kinds of things. And, and through his efforts along with others, but he's kind of the, the leading person on this. They, they, they have a chance to bring in $250,000 through some nonprofits to help our, our, our local youth. So if it was up to me, it would be those two, probably Jamie uh, by, a, by a hair. Thank you, Councilor V. Hill. Councilor Hensley. We are and Councilor Carson. We are so blessed as a city to have this list as well as many others who do so much um, for our community, for the people of our community in all different ways. And there's many more besides this list. And so it makes it tough to do this, but I will say, um, if I was also to choose, I think Rob Pickett does a lot as well. And honestly, we don't ever hear as much about him. He really does it in a way that is under the radar. And that's always impressed me. So I do think, but again, obviously I could say something for each of these. I also, though, have to say that I would personally probably pick Jamie. Um, all the things he's done, and also his story. Um, in all honesty, and he's been very open about his story, that it hasn't always been easy for him. And he had a path that kind of was not going the right direction, and he chose and took a different path. So I also think it shows, um, especially now with so many of our citizens that whether it be heroin or whatever, have sort of drifted or taken a path that is hurting them, that there is still time to make that change. 
and look at all the good that you can do if you change that path. So anyway, so for me, and again, not trying to undermine any of the others, but personally, I just think Jamie right now is the one that I would go for. Okay, thank you, Councilor Hensley, Councilor Carson, and then uh, Councilor Grohl, then Councilor Grego. I, I'm actually kind of torn as well with this list. I, I was having to ponder a little bit more than I, than I thought. Talk I would, so. can, can you use your microphone? I'm having to ponder it a little more than I thought I would, so I'll hold my Okay, thank you, sir. Councillor uh, Brawls and then Councillor Grego. No, you know, for the same reasons that Council, Councilman Vigil said about Ruthie Brown, I've been impressed. She's been a long time, 30 year advocate for the beautification of Alamosa, and she's been consistent now. I understand she has a, a unique personality, but besides that, uh, she's been a real advocate and a real, I, I think, mainstay for, and a champion and hero for Alamosa. Uh, that, that's my uh, observation over the last 30 years. Thank you, Councilor Bros. Councilor Grego. I, I agree with, uh, with Liz. There, there's a lot of people out there, the more than the list that we got here. I think what, what Council ought to do is not wait for CML to do something. Maybe we ought to do something monthly, bring people in that are, and recognize them for the, what, the, what they're doing out in this community. That, like you said, there's, there's a lot, a lot of people. But I, I, I've known Jamie a lot of years, and like you said, he struggled. But his struggle was to, to move forward in a positive way. He never, he never, he never cried about uh, uh, the, what was going on at the time. And he's done a lot for our community. He, these parks that we built, you know, he brings those, all that food and he, everything. He's involved. He's, what gets me about Jamie, he, he wants to be involved with, with the youth. You know, uh, Chris and Stein, I think they go out there and give bags of food to, to the needy. Yeah, it's, it's, there's a list of stuff that this man does that is, is incredible. And, and he, he, what he does, he's, he's a leader because he gets these other people together mm -hmm. to, to, to help out and stuff, which is growing and growing. So it feels up to me. I, I, you know, this is a great list, and there is maybe it should be a larger list. Okay. But uh, I would, my deal would be to come go with uh, Jamie Dominguez. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Council. Um, I must say that all of these people on this list are my heroes, and they're community heroes, and they all should be recognized in some form or fashion. Um, just by mentioning their names, it, it means a lot as well, and having them in that group of names. From listening to you all so far, it seems like there's a consensus on uh, Jamie Dominguez. I'm not for sure if this is a voting. Um, this is something we have to vote on. Okay, so I'm going to turn it back to Council to see how you all want to move forward with this. Councilor Vigil. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to, I think that's a great idea for Mr. Grego about uh, having our own Alamosa Hero Award. I agree. Yep, that's, that's great. Um, and, and just to give everybody a little bit more love in here, I mean, you know, we talked about Ruthie, Mick, Daniel, all the stuff he's done for our trail systems and the outdoors. Uh, Julie, getting all the, getting our, our local farming incubators and, and securing that land out there for our local farmers. Rob Pickett helping with the hockey rink and all that stuff that he's done out there. And then Luke with all the mental health and the, it's just the restorative programs and that's just huge. But uh, if it was up to me, I would go with Jamie and I would move that we uh, nominate Jamie as the CML Municipal Hero for Alamosa. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Not, please start voting. Ms. Holly? The motion carried unanimously. Thank you. Up next, we have. Um, a sponsorship process that I think Ms. Heather's going to talk about. So I want to begin this process with a little bit of, a, of an apology. Um, last year, we got a lot of requests for outside funding, and um, they were all very valid, very worthwhile projects. And what we found is because we didn't have much structure to that process, we, we quickly went through that line item of 10,000 and council was faced at trying to find money and other savings and, and all of that type of stuff. So um, it, it, 
I don't want to say it became chaotic because that's a bit of a strong word, but it, it was a little trying to find money under rocks type of situation. And during that time, council had talked about maybe we need to have a more structured process. And if I would have been more on the ball, I would have thought through this and probably brought this through back before you guys in November so we could have something set up for this fiscal year. So I want to apologize for that. With that in mind, though, it would be good if we can move quickly if we are going to do a structured process because as we've seen tonight, we are already starting to get these requests and we want to be fair and objective in, in how we handle that. What we typed up before you tonight um, isn't something that we're necessarily emotionally invested in, but we wanted to put something before you to get the ball rolling and what that structure might look like. And so this is something for any of these areas, you can change, add, modify, anything like that. But to put something out there um, for you to even have a discussion. Um, what staff's recommendation is, is that if you were to have two council members serve on a committee, we would have a form and what we did is we went and looked at the marketing form because they've been doing this for a long time we modified that to kind of fit better from a city perspective um, anyone and we would split the year into two halves so if someone is having an event in the first half they would fill out the application have it turned in by a deadline and then five thousand would be allocated in in that way towards those events as council sees fit and then the those who are having an event in the second half of the year would fill out an application with that's a different deadline and we can compare all of those against each other at that time as well so this way it's not a first come first serve it's it's not you know if someone's not aware of doing an event it's a new event but it's later in the year they still have that second deadline um, type of situation by doing it in a more structured manner, it does allow council to have all of that information in front of you. So you can better know that if you give 2000 to this person, that means that the other person might only get 500 or nothing. And that might be okay, but at least you're making those decisions, not in a vacuum, but you know who's getting what. So those two council members would review those applications. They would make a recommendation on the funding, but then that would come before council. So you would still see all of the applications. You could modify what that recommendation is. Um, the intent of this is to try to streamline it and not have extra meetings for council. But if it's something where you want all of council to review all of those, we can have extra work sessions um, or those types of things. I didn't want to do 100% the process that the marketing board uses in regards to the, where they take almost a whole half day and have them come do presentations. I felt that for a lot of the events you guys are used to seeing, what that application form asks for, you could probably know what's going on. If there is questions, you can always call the agency and ask questions and that and, and have them explain something. Um, but again, this is just recommendation. If you want a more robust process, you can create a more robust process. Um, but this is just to, to get that discussion going. Finally, um, in order to prevent you getting asked over and over and over and, and we're trying to add this structure I would recommend that you know if someone missed the deadline and, and they just didn't realize we were doing it they'll know it for next year and and that we don't get into that habit of well let's try to find money somewhere else and and that kind of stuff because then it, it will promote others to potentially do the same thing so I think the goal one of the goals was to try to have this be more organized have you be able to make decisions knowing the full set of information um, and not just kind of be hit out of the hit all the time and with requests so thank, thank you Heather Councillor uh, Hensley and then so, Councillor Daniel thank you very much for putting this together and starting off the discussion um, everything looks great to me my only um, maybe feedback or concern is the idea of splitting it into two I was just sort of thinking of events, and I may be wrong, but it feels like a lot of events happen in the second half of the year. And so I, just throwing out there, I almost think that we do it as a one time, having all the 10,000, and that we make the decision, and sort of the same thing, if somebody comes up with an event that's at the end and they didn't think about it, then we can do the same thing you, you just said, is that next year they'll know. I just don't, I guess I'm just, that for me just feels a little 
different. I'm not saying I'm totally against it, but I almost prefer having it as a one. We give them whatever the deadline is to get it in, no matter when it is in the year. And like, you know, and obviously sometimes people do come up with an event at the last minute, but then the next year they'll know that they, they can put in for the process. So that would be my only sort of thing that I would maybe consider doing differently. But I'd love to hear the feedback from everybody else. Thank you, Councilor Hansley. Councilor Daniel. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Welcome. Um, so I had, so I appreciate what you said. I had the exact opposite reaction. I was super excited that we split it in half because I think it gives more people opportunity. So that's, but I, I totally hear, hear what you're saying, Councilor Hensley. Um, the other thing that I would just request is that we had a, a pretty decent list last year of people we gave funding to. I would want um, a special outreach from staff to let them know about the process changing. Um, and then, of course, the Rural Philanthropy Days, you said you were gonna follow up with, with Mick and Jan. And so the, the, I think I like this, but I, like, I can hear the feedback Councillor Hensley had. Um, but I think it was only fair to the people who have come to us in the past and either were, you know, that they know that this process has now changed. Okay, uh, I'm gonna let uh, Councillor Hensley respond, but Councillor Carson is right after that because she just asked to respond to what you said. Then Councillor Carson, go ahead. So real quick, so one thought I had, so let's even take this example of the philanthropy days. It's in September. So then they, but they, it sounds, it feels like they kind of would like to know if they're getting the money. So that's where I feel like it gets a little, um, messy maybe because they'll probably apply right now but then we would say we are not going to consider yours because you're in the second half because we're waiting for others for that second half so that's why i guess some of some of them so anyway not trying to argue but more my thought process so okay thank you councillor carson and then councillor grego um i think splitting it'll help us avoid getting inundated with a ton of requests at the same time it'll make weeding through them a little bit easier as well and the to address your point of the, that event happening in the, half, at the second half of the year, I think that'd be something that the people going through that list have to consider instead of just knocking them off the list. Or if they had applied at the beginning, you know, it puts them in priority for the second half. You know, they're at the top of the list because they were here. But uh, I think if we, if we keep it in one, if we don't split it, we're going to get hit with all of them at the same time. It's going to be a little more difficult than we do. Okay. Thank so you, Kevin. I suggest we move forward the way it is. Thank you, sir. Councillor Grego. One thing I would want uh, council to remind council, I, I look at this money as seed money to get programs started. And if we start looking at it just that annually they come back over and over and over, I, I disagree with that, you know. And it's, if it's going to be the same people, you know, once you come once, maybe once, twice, even three, three times, you should already have your program set and, and move forward. You know, for us to continue sponsoring the same program, that doesn't allow other people that probably has built up this big crowd of people that come in. So that's something I think that we should look at when we're doing this. Thank you, Council Grigo. Okay, all right, Council, let's see, what are your wishes? Can I just jump in real fast? Real fast. Um, if you still want to split it, but feel that there is some validity to, to Councillor Hensley's point that more occur in the warmer time frame, you it doesn't have to be a 50-50 split either. You could do a 40-60 or you know something like that, so 4,000, 6,000 or, or something like that, or if you guys are comfortable with the 5,000. So again, this is something for you guys to discuss. So I didn't mean to throw a curveball as you were wrapping this up. But I wanted to make sure you guys were coming at it from that perspective as well. Eric? It also doesn't have to be a six month, six month split. Okay, thank okay. you. Um, Councillor V. Hill, then Councillor Carson. Oh, I was. Oh, That's, I didn't see you. I was actually yeah, thinking about that too, Eric. Um, how about we, what if we do, uh, split up the year in thirds? How difficult is it to get that data? You know, we, we, we normally know how many people are coming at us on an average the last five years. We can take that and just figure it from that. I mean, we don't have to vote on this tonight because the, pro the, the reality is we're gonna, move, we're gonna move forward with it anyway, yeah. the process. But we need to but vote. But the, 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 the specifics of it is what I'm saying is if we're gonna consider a third or a half or a 40, 60. Well, whatever, we, but we need, it needs to be voted on tonight though. Yeah. And then my next question is, um, your one, two, three, four, fifth, your sixth bullet about um, moving quickly and getting a due date of February 1st, who is that for? 
Would that be for the, the, the January It'd be for this to first, June? Yes, it would be for this January through June. Okay. I, to me, that sounds kind of quick. I, I would like to extend that a little bit. So I, the only reason I did a quick one is because there may be some who are in February that need to know if they're going to have a sponsor to know if they're going to be able to do the event. That's the only reason I did a quick one was to try to capture those that are in early February. Okay, and I, and I agree with you, Mike, that we, there, there is data there. We got to see right. when this is going up. Thanks. Okay. And Councillor, uh, and keep in mind, this is the first adjustment. We'll be able to review this after a year if we move forward. So this is not anything that's etched in stone as we talk about this. I don't believe we have to be talking all night about it. So um, Councillor Hensley and then Councillor Daniel. You are before me, are you oh. okay? Yeah, you can go ahead, that's fine. I was just gonna say that I think honestly for, um, so when you look at the marketing board money and the money here and not trying to compare, I think for what we're doing, and it is a substantial amount of money for us, but at the same time, it's not tons of money. And so my thought is let's, I'm not, I was just bringing something up, I'm fine, let's do it this way for a year or whatever way anybody decides. I think what's more important is we get it started and that, um, there may be some tweaks, there always is. And so I think whatever it is, at least it's out there, it's known, and then we reevaluate it next year and if we need to make some adjustments. But for me, so I'm okay then just going the way it is or whatever is decided. Okay. Um, but more importantly is just let's get it going. Let's get it going. Thank you, Councillor Daniel. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to speak to uh, Councillor Griego's um, point. I was really excited to see the previously funded events on here and I think like that's, I, I think you're right. I think we try to work really hard to help people get started. Um, and so I think this is gonna be very helpful when we review the application. So thank you for that. Thank you, Councilor. Thank you for having it in the application. Thank you, Councilor Griego. And with that, I'll make the motion that we uh, move on the sponsorship process that was presented to us. I'll okay. second that. A motion and a second, any further discussion? Start voting, please. Ms. Holly. The motion carried unanimously. Okay, up next we have committee. Oh, oh. So can you guys tell me who the two volunteers are from a council who, perspective who would to like review the volunteer? those? Okay, we have one person want to volunteer and okay, two people volunteer. Um, Councilor Daniel, Councilor Vigil. Uh, council, are you okay, everybody? Thumbs up? All right, good, all right, we got them. Done, good deal. All right, up next we have committee reports. Does anyone have any committee reports that you'd like to share? Council Vigil. Thank you, Mayor. The HPAC had a, a work session a couple, uh, last week. Um, they advised me not to attend, that I didn't need to go. They were doing their own thing. But um, Ralph Simbling, who's on the board, has gotten off. He, wa he wants to be done with it. So there's a, a vacancy on that board and um, myself, or Don or Holly is going to reach out to Ralph that he needs to submit a letter of resignation so that then he, uh, Holly can uh, start the process of finding someone else. Okay. Thank you, Council V. Hill. Any other council um, comment, or committee reports? I'm sorry. Okay. If not, we'll move on to staff announcement. Yes. Staff announcement. Brief staff announcement. Uh huh. <laughs> we have a bet on when this meeting's going to end. Um, so Mark and Kenny, if you want to head on up, we've got a few um, updates. Mark, um, first we'll talk a little bit about the snow removal. We've clearly seen a lot of snow the last few days. Okay, just to let you know what effort has been going forth. So I kind of feel like we were patting, got, to get a pat, got a pat on the back with the first snow event of this year, and now we're paying for that pat on the back. <laughs> Um, but at the height of the last snow event, we had every piece of our equipment moving. We had two county trucks that they handed the keys to us at no charge. And so that was, those were running. We had in addition to that, six contractor dump trucks, two contractor uh, motor graders, and a contractor a loader that we were paying for. And so that, that essentially is more than doubling the amount of equipment that we were addressing at that storm. We still are in the hole. We still have not moved what we want to move. Um, we are going to, we have shifted from moving the snow piles downtown 
to moving the cul-de-sacs. The cul-de-sacs are a big problem in the residential area because there's no place to push it. So we are windrowing the cul-de-sacs to the center and picking those up because of that. We, are, we have a cleared path on all uh, city streets at least once, but we do have citizens that are helping us and maybe not the best way, and they have pushed things back into this, the city right away and reclosed streets that we once have o had opened. We will be coming to you with an amendment to some of the ordinances about disposal of snow within city right away. Um, that will not change the requirement for citizens to shovel their sidewalks or anything like that. Uh, but we do need to address that issue because it is causing us problems in the downtown area and in the residential areas. Um, I think that's it. Well, and just to address, because I know sometimes we get questions of why do we not just push it to the center of the road? If we push it to the center of the road, then we have to collect it. And with almost 60 miles of road, we, we don't have the ability to collect and move that much snow. And so, yes, we recognize for those vehicles parked along the street or some driveways and, and those types of things. And the priority, not only do we have the priority streets, but we also have the priority in how we respond. So the first is to try to keep up with the snow um, and, and to try to get ahead of it and those types of things. But it's also to make it passable and then once we get catch our breath we can go and do more detailed type of work that that might be needed the other part that that mark kind of touched on but i'm going to talk a little bit more about is we are seeing in some neighborhoods massive piles that private individuals that's not the city that has created that and that's actually um we're, we've got significant concerns about that so that's some of the changes we're going to make to make it clear that you cannot do that we are going to have to go move that snow because one it would take forever to melt but then while it's still there it blocks the sewer so then it's creating ice patches and and those types of things so we're going to have to take care of that as we learn with every snow event, we can always do better on communicating and, and those types of things. It's gonna be hard to meet every expectation. Um, you know, we try to communicate what priorities are. The other thing to keep in mind is, it's one thing to respond to a normal snow event, it's another when you're getting as much snow. So sometimes we get questions of, the residential roads get that snow pack. Well, when it's coming down as heavy as it is and we're trying to keep the commercial and the arterial roads, we can't stay in front of it all the time in front of the residentials. And once it gets that snowpack, there's very little we can do without hurting the blades and the road to get at some of that other than now you will see we're doing some sand at some different locations as well. So Mark. Hey, Councilor V. Hill. Go ahead, Mark. Okay. A couple other things. Once the, the snow changes to ice and is an ice pack, we cannot then remove it without damaging the roadway surface. So we have to wait to a, till a thaw event before we can move that because once it's frozen to the asphalt, if we try to move it off the asphalt once it's ice, we can pick, peel up the asphalt with it. The other thing I wanted to say and acknowledge, there was a request by the county which was granted to use our snow dump. So they are using that and um, no charge, no, you know, it's just, that's just one of the help each other. Okay. Uh, the last thing I wanted to say is, uh, it is the policy of the city that if we have to move this, the, a vehicle across a piece of roadway, no matter whose jurisdiction it is that has a snow plow on it, we're gonna drop the plow and push the snow. We're helping each other on all the events. Okay, thank you. Councilor Hensley. I was just going to say, so I wanted to tell you how much I appreciate everything you and the staff have done. Um, and obviously, it's not looking like it's going to lighten up because I do feel like we're going to have snow I, per Friday and next Tuesday. So I just know it's going to continue. So thank you. I guess this is one of the things I know even when I walked in, I said how cold I was. And what we're really getting is more of our typical weather. Right. And we've been spoiled for the last few years. Um, and we need the water, which is a good thing, but thank you for everything you're doing. And obviously, um, maybe we just promote or try to let everybody know to be patient and we're doing the best we can. And it's actually a lot better than some other communities could be. Thank you.
Councillor Vigil. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. So I'm glad you brought some of that. I, I got, I've gotten phone calls on this every day. Um, on the south side next to the elementary school, there's a few cul-de-sacs in that area. And it's like you come off the driveway and you're going up a hill of frozen snow and ice. And there's nothing that can happen now because it's, it's frozen. Can't, nothing will happen. So I'm glad you're going to address your plans for cul-de-sacs. Um, uh, I've, I've gotten some phone calls about uh, angry neighbors because their neighbors aren't clearing their walks. And If you want to give us those addresses, we can have our enforcement personnel follow up. Okay, thank you. And then finally, um, I'm also glad you guys addressed uh, some people were pretty frustrated that they couldn't get out of their driveways because the plows had blocked them in and then they dig themselves out and then the plow comes back and throws it back and that so I'm, I, I, you guys are doing a great job much kudos I just want you guys to be aware and I'm sure you guys know that so Miss, Mr. Mayor if I may sure go okay ahead. so the next phase that we're going to do after COVID if we don't get more snow and have to go back to the beginning and, and start over again the next phase we we do know that there's considerable amount of snow in the what would be the parking areas in all the streets so the next phase would be is we would start pushing that snow and we realize that as soon as we start pushing that we're going to plow in the driveways that everybody has worked hard to shovel out as we start pushing that, we've, we've, uh, Ray and I talked today, we will do that in a two equipment process. So instead of just having the, the snow plower or the motor aerator go through and push that snow, we will have two pieces of equipment and another um, uh, um, staff member to control traffic where we will pick up with the loader what has been pushed in the driveways to the extent we can. We're gonna do the best we can with that so that we don't just inundate the, the, the uh, citizens again with the, the uh, uh, huge amount of snow we have. The second thing, the last thing that I wanted to say that I forgot in my initial presentation, we have essentially burned through our entire 2019 budget for snow removal, mm -hmm. and we have probably burned through the savings that we had in 2018. <laughs> So, uh, you know, we're not even three weeks into the 2019 and we're, we're done. So we, we're not going to stop any of our efforts. We're going to continue those efforts, but just understand there'll be a, a budget request that'll follow when we gather up all the bills. Thank you, Mark. Councilor Carson, um, can you speak into the mic, you. please? Thank you for, for removing the snow so expeditedly. It was, it was very, very um, helpful. The, the one comment I got a lot, and I got calls on it this weekend a lot, were that when the roads are being swept from east to west into Ross, there's, there's pretty much a pile on every north corner, um, and it's caused a lot, ton of vehicles to get stuck and some damage to a couple vehicles because as they come off Ross into the streets turning west, it's not possible for them to get into the street without coming real far around because as, as the plow swept out onto Ross, made this curve and a wave of snow into onto the street and it's on about four or five streets and so i got a ton of calls on that so just a heads up that you know it, what i'm talking about right i don't specifically so if we could talk afterwards okay. specifically where you're talking and how it happened i we can address that okay we'll talk about that thank you thank you very much mark okay thank you so very much thank you heather for that um allow mark to come up okay chief anderson Um, so, currently we are prorating the school resource officer cost to the Alamos School District. We will bill them for half the year due to only having a certified school resource officer employed there for half the year. A uh, full year cost to the Alamos School District is $25,000. we are going to bill them for $12,500. Um, last week we purchased two new 2019 all-wheel drive Dodge Durango patrol vehicles. Uh, we received two bids for the order. None of the bids were from local vendors. Uh, the vendor that we went with is Johnson Auto Plaza out of Brighton, Colorado. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your report, sir. Thank you guys for your support, by the way. You're Appreciate welcome. It. Keep up the great work. 
Okay, Heather? I just have um, two quick ones. One is a reminder that we do have a work session next week. Um, the last one is we are partnering with the marketing board. The marketing board is taking the lead to submit an application to Craft Studio 101. And um, there's, not a, there's not a financial commitment, um, but it is to work collaboratively of how can we, from an economic development perspective, ca better capture as a community the tourism and, and get our community to, to do that. So on that group would be myself. Um, Liz was um, asked to do that from an ASU working with interns connection, but then obviously she wears hats for the marketing board and city as well. Um, Andy um, for our events, but then also the chamber, SBDC, the county is participating, um, and we have our local businesses participating. And it's almost kind of a train the trainer. So they're gonna come and do some extensive vision. What do we wanna accomplish? What are the major goals? What's gonna be our identity? Train us on how to do all that, and then we can better roll that out to businesses um, to better capture the tourism economy. Thank you, Heather. <coughs> Up next we have, um Council comments? Council Brawls? Yeah, I would like to, this hero nomination made me think of Kenton Sandy Holtzkamp, who owned the, the Bistro Rialto. You know, they, they did an excellent job. They took a burned down theater, remodeled it, and for 15 years had a good business there at a historic location. And I think, you know, I thank them for the number of college students that they hired. And uh, that was really a, a landmark business. It's going to be missed, and uh, I just want to publicly thank, give them a big thanks for what they did for the community of Alamosa. Thank you, Councilor Burroughs. Councilor Hanson? I was very honored last week to uh, participate in uh, a little celebration for the service of our employees. And well, I forget what the total number was. It was over 100 uh, years uh, for the employees that were honored. But um, it was a very nice event, and I want to thank staff because I know since you actually brought up about the bistro, it was initially planned to be at the bistro, and there was some quick maneuvering to, to move it, and so great job on doing that. And just, I really, we are just so lucky to have the staff we have, and so it was neat to be part of that. Okay, any other, Councilor Griego? I had one, uh, I, I think this is like for Holly. This uh, CML legislative deal, it, is it too late to go, or who's going, or what? No, you still have time to register, so if you want to go, let me know, and I'll get you registered. Okay. Is anybody going to that? Okay. Good. All right. Councilor Carson? Uh, I just wanted to say thank you to the staff. Um, we had an issue come up this week, and I won't get into the issue, but um, between working with council and the staff, it got addressed really quickly, and the citizens were very pleased with the outcome, and, and I really want to thank you guys for that. They were extremely happy. Thank you, Councilor Carson. And finally, I'll just have a comment for Andy and the Park and Rec's team. We had our first um, hockey tournament this weekend at the Rec Center, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and uh, we had teams from Durango, New Mexico. There were a lot of people there that showed up who stayed in our hotels and ate in our restaurants. And they had nothing but great things to say about our staff and the event and how things uh, panned out. Our team uh, did OK. Um, <laughs> You know, they won a game, and they, but they worked hard, and they poured their hearts, soul, and sweat into the, to the, the matches um, in, in the tournament. But just wanted you all to know that we're already experiencing that economic impact of that facility by having and hosting that tournament one year. Within one year of us opening it, we had our first tournament. So that's amazing. Thank you. Councilor Daniel. Sorry, Mayor, I, I forgot. So the um, Ice Fest is coming up, and I'm very excited about that. Um, if you guys want to run a very chilly 5K, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be out there. And I, I think, the, as the mayor committed to doing the polar plunge well, again, I, I think we have a system. This is the challenge. Um, <laughs> Councilor Daniel and myself has challenged Heather and her staff uh, and some of council members as well to do the polar plunge. And we just wanted to give you all an invitation to join us in a spectacular event. And uh, we are going to do the polar plunge. Some of us on council, I'm not going to call anyone out right now, but I know I have uh, a consensus amount of numbers of people who's going <laughs> to participate. So just wanted you all to know that since Councilor Daniel brought that up. Uh, unfortunately, though, our city manager is going to be out of town on a planned vacation, so she won't be able to honor that uh, challenge. But 
I'll let her make a few comments on that. I, you know, staff's very disappointed in making sure I pay for not being here, but we also, from staff, just want to say bring it because <laughs> we're going we're gonna to show you what we got. We're, we're going to bring ours. You just might want to stop at Walmart and pick up your A-game because that's what you're going to need. <laughs> Okay, we don't have any further comments. This meeting is adjourned. <laughs>